What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It is your girl, Rita, and I am here to do a video for you and you and you. Uh, take some time out right now and just go ahead on and hit that like button. I think you're gonna like this one now, even though I do have a video for this on my channel. It's been a couple of years since I've made this at my house, and I think the last time I made it, it was when I did this video over two years ago. This is gonna be just some good old regular smegler meatloaf you guys i'm gonna start out by using me some 8515 beef um ground beef now i'm not gonna add any other meat traditionally i just use um regular old ground beef uh you can use a fat content you can use a higher fat it doesn't matter because you're gonna bake it and the fat is gonna come off some anyway but i try to use a lean uh, uh, a lean beef if i can sometimes i might put some ground pork in here for a different flavor i've done ground chicken and made barbecue chicken meatloaf all of that is already on the uh channel but i know sometimes y'all get just stuck on the ones that are uh, posting right now and i wanted some meatloaf like i said because it had been two years since i've made it so right now we're just going to start out with our ground beef okay to this ground beef, this is what I do now. I have me some tricolor bell peppers, you guys. Now, you can just dice up your uh, bell peppers and onions very uh, small. Dice them up really good. This is some bell peppers, some onions, and some fresh garlic bulbs. Probably about four of them that I put in here. Um, but I saute them, y'all, because I don't like to have that... Um, that hard uh, consistency of those fresh vegetables in my meatloaf. Even though they are gonna cook a little bit when they're down here, this just brings out the uh, taste of those peppers and it also just is a more pleasing um, to my palate when I do it that way. So I'm gonna put, in, but let them cool though before you put them in, into your beef, okay? Let your, if you're gonna uh, saute them, let them cool, okay? So I'm just gonna put me some egg in here. You know you got to have some egg to bind the devil. No, we're gonna bind this um, meatloaf, okay? <clears throat> so that's two eggs. And then this is just me some sliced bread. Uh, two slices that I poured some um, milk on, you guys, and I just let it soak until it gets to this pasty consistency, you know, just like this. You don't want a milk show, but you just want that bread to break down and get pasty. So usually I'll start this bread mixture before I do anything else. I'll let that bread just sit up in that milk and just do what it needs to do, okay? So there you have it. You don't want to overwork your beef because it will get tough. That will make it tougher. And we know that ground beef is just kind of like a tough meat anyway. It's not just no tender meat that we look to be falling off or nothing because it ain't no bone to fall off of. So what I'm going to be seasoning with, it, you guys, I'm going to take me some smoked paprika. About two tablespoons per pound of meat is what I generally say, okay? But you can uh, definitely do what you want to. Now, on these uh, pepper flakes, I'm just going to dap it, you know? I'm just going to hit it one good time, okay? That's just because I like, y'all know me by now. Y'all know I like me a little spice in my stuff, okay? Then we're going to get us some Italian seasoning. This is going to be the seasoning that I want to be most pronounced in my meatloaf. So I'm just going to do me about... Four tablespoons of that, two tablespoons per pound. Okay, I want that taste to come through when I taste my um, meatloaf. Then I'm just going to dash it with some Worcestershire sauce. Just a dash, you guys. Pop, pop. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's it. I'm going to put me some salt and some pepper in here. <clears throat> As I said, you season like you want to season, season like you think you need to season. With ground beef, it is important to season because ground beef is, uh, it soaks up the, the seasonings. And so you have to have some seasoning in there if you want to taste some seasoning. Okay, so now I'm just going to get this all worked in together. When you come back, it'll be all, when I come back to y'all, it'll be all mixed in. And then we're just going to put it in our uh, pan. Hold on just a second, okay? Okay, y'all, I'm back. So now that we done beat the meat, <laughs> okay, you don't want to beat it too much. You just, you know, you want to mix the meat. Beat the, beat the up, you know. Eh. 
Now that we did that, we're just going to change it and we're going to put it in, switch it over to what we're going to put, put it in. Now, I do have a loaf pan, you guys. But one thing I will tell you about doing your meatloaf, okay, when you do it and you go over into your pan like this, if it's already falling apart, you may not have enough binder. You know, you might have to go in there and put you some more uh, breadcrumbs in there or something like that, some crackers or something. But what you want to do is you want to get it as tight and as in a cute as a loaf. It ain't got to be cute. That's me talking. That's that's my inner. Y'all know I got that inner thing. Now, this pan was sprayed, you guys. I sprayed it with some um, oil. Okay, and then we're just going to... You see how close this is to this side? If you're going to be doing it in just a, a Pyrex or just a, a, a casserole dish, make sure that if if you don't have a loaf pan, which I do, and I'll tell you why come I don't like to use it, um, that you don't have a whole lot of si uh, space for it to expand. Because it won't expand and, and lay all out flat if it don't have really nowhere to go. I hope that makes sense. Like, get it in something tight if you don't have a loaf pan. Like, don't put it in, in it. the pan this big and you love this little, okay? And then we're just going to get it cute like we want it. Try to get any little open spots and, and mash them together because you want it to bake and stay tight into a loaf, okay? We're going to do this. This is going to go into a 375 degree oven for 40 minutes. And uh, 40 to 45 minutes, okay? We want an internal temperature of when it's done about 165. But at 45 minutes, I will put my glaze on it. And I'm going to show you in just a minute how I do my glaze so that when this come out, we can glaze it and put it in for another 15 minutes. Does that make sense? I know it do because y'all smart than a mother. <laughs> So I know y'all make this making sense to y'all. So we're just gonna put this right in the oven, y'all. And don't it already just look like it's gonna be so delicious? Cause it is. Be right back. I'm gonna show y'all how to make the glaze in just a second. Hold on. Okay, you guys. So here is what I'm gonna do for my glaze for my topping. So I have about a fourth of a cup or so of brown sugar. And to that, I'm just gonna be adding me a, about a tablespoon. <clears throat> of um, mustard, tablespoon of my favorite barbecue sauce, okay, tablespoon of um, ketchup, okay, round, there we go. A splash of hot sauce. Okay. I'm just gonna mix this up. If I don't like the the texture or the taste, I just keep on messing with it until I get something perfect that I just love. Okay. I don't use tomato paste for my topping. I I do sometimes. It just depends on how the wind blowing, you know. I, you just never know what you're gonna do with me, child. But for now, this is the one that I'm using on this one that I'm making today. And now, all we're gonna do as soon as our um, meatloaf comes out of the oven after 45 minutes, we're gonna spread this on there, okay? And we're just gonna keep on messing with. It. Oh yeah, I already like the taste. I'm just gonna mess with it. Get it to the consistency and the thickness that I want. And when it comes out for that 45-minute um, break, we're going to spread this on the slather, this on the top. And then we're going to be 15 minutes after that, we're going to be eating. So, see you in a minute. Okay, hey, you guys. So, it's been about 35, 40 minutes. And my um, meatloaf is almost done. So, before I go in here and I put my topping on here, you guys, I just go around this perimeter just like this. You don't have to do this, y'all. This is just something that I do. And I get out all of this little excess fat and, and excess juice and all of that. Because I want, when I go in here, this last, um, I don't know where my little syringe is. That's what I need right now. But um, 
when I get ready for it to be done just because I want it to be pleasing to my sight. <laughs> Y'all know I am about the way food looks. I want all of this little stuff from out here. You can just drain this off and pour this, but I just wanted y'all to see me doing this. Normally I have my husband take it over there to the sink and um, you know, just pour this, pour this off. Let me see actually if I can pour some of it off. Y'all know I don't have the best arms, but I'm gonna try to pour some of this fat off of here without making a day. You can see, I don't know if you can see just how it's just so juicy. You see all those juices are just running out of there like that. You guys, and so I just come right over and put some of this fat off, okay? And this was an 8515, like I said, but you're gonna get that fat. You are going to get that fat. And you want it, and you really want it, you know? You want a juicy meatloaf. You don't wanna take your time, you know, you don't wanna diddle dally, diddly, diddly dally, what they ladies say on that commercial. You wanna, you wanna get what you came for when you do your meatloaf. So I want it to be, you know, kinda juicy and fatty. But um, I also am a, a person that eats with my eyes. So, you know, I just get some of that fat out. And I've always done this, y'all. I don't know. I'm probably the only one. Am I the only one? I just don't want all that fat around there. Just want me some pretty little stuff. So now we're just going to go ahead on. And we're just going to put our um, sauce down on here. And the other thing, that's what I was going to tell you about a loaf. I like to do it in here because with the loaf, my sides are kind of in that loaf unless I take it out of the loaf. But I like to do it like this and then I can expose those sides. I want this this um, delicious tangy, sweet and tangy and spicy sauce. I want it around my whole thing, okay? This is personal to you, how thick you want it how you want it to taste. You can just do all um, tomato paste. You can do, um, uh, what is it, all barbecue sauce, or you can do what I did, and I will definitely leave you the um, instructions for this delicious glaze so you can make you a just like I did. Cause that's why you here, to see where Rita's cooking and to cook where Rita cook, right? And they're red, okay? So we're gonna just put this in the oven for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna let it cool because I don't like to go straight into cutting it, and I know y'all gonna wanna see me cut a piece. So I'm just gonna do that. Give this 15 minutes in the oven, take it out, let it cool, and then we'll cut us a little end piece. Now to know if your um, meatloaf is cooked and it's at the right temperature, test it at the ends and in the middle with a meat thermometer, okay? And that's how you'll know you want at least 165 to have you some good old delicious cooked perfectly beef, okay? Be right back. And then we're gonna end this thing. Oops, food grass. We need some food grass. We need some food grass. We need some food grass. There you go. There's a food grass. Yeah. Look at that. We make it better. All right, y'all. Don't forget your food grass. Okay, y'all, would you look at this beauty, honey? She is ready. I let her sit for um, 15 minutes while I did some things around here. So we got this nice juice. You can already see the juices blowing out. Can you see them just blowing out? Um, and it just looks so good. I know y'all was gonna wanna see me cut it. So I'm gonna cut my daughter a piece and I'm gonna make her a plate, All right? You'll know um, if you're cutting it too soon because it'll just start to break apart on you if, if you're cutting it too soon. I think I gave it enough time. Let me get me something to get her out with. You wanna get her out? Back here knocking stuff down, sorry. Put my top back on my, back on my cabbage, cabbage. Get this little sucker out right here. I'm gonna keep that in, cause you know I like the end. I'm gonna give my daughter this piece. I'm gonna show y'all this beautiful plate that I done made up today on this Sunday afternoon. Mm, I'm so ready to eat. Look at that, y'all. Dinner is ready. Do you hear what I'm saying? Let's taste this. Let's just see. I'm not gonna taste hers. I'm gonna see. 
how this is coming to loose, if it's flaking on or loose, like it should. See. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Look at that, y'all. Delicious. Get you a bite. There you go. Get your bite. Let me take me a bite. Lord, we thank you for this food. Thank you for this day that wasn't promised to us. We ask that you watch over us, protect us, us and our loved ones, all that we care about, God. We ask that we're more intentional about giving you time and not just asking you for things, God. And with this food, God, we ask you to bless it. Let it be a nourishment to our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. One more bite. There you go. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Yeah, this plate, gonna be, this plate is litty, okay? Tell me this plate ain't lit tea, okay? If you haven't made my cabbage, you better. My hack for my cornbread, you better. And now you got these canned sweet potatoes, honey. Ah, I'm so ready. Okay, I'm not going to keep you guys long. I'm just want to stop by here, give you a couple of recipes, and I will see you on the next one when we see what Rita's cooking. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Food ain't all the way live. It's been Rita Ty. Love you. Don't look at my fingernails. So rude.